Atisa Dipamkara Srijnana Bengali, Atisa Dipankara Srijnana Translate, Odish Dipankor Srigan, Standard Tibetan, Chinese, Ran Deng Ji Shang Ji Pinyin, Ran Deng Ji Shang Zi CE was a Buddhist Bengali religious leader and master from the Indian subcontinent. He was one of the major figures in the spread of 11th century Mahayana and Vajrayana Buddhism in Asia and inspired Buddhist thought from Tibet to Sumatra. In 1013 CE, he travelled to the Srivijaya kingdom and stayed there for 12 years and came back to India. He is recognised as one of the greatest figures of classical Buddhism, and Atisa's chief disciple Dramtan was the founder of the Kadam school, one of the new translation schools of Tibetan Buddhism, later supplanted by the Gelug tradition in the 14th century, adopting its teaching and absorbing its monasteries. In 2004, Atisa was ranked number 18 in BBC's poll of the greatest Bengali of all time. Early life <inaudible> <inaudible> Palace life Bikrampur, the most probable place for Atisa's birthplace, was the capital of the Pala Empire as it had been of the ancient kingdoms of southeast Bengal. Though the city's exact location is not certain, it presently lies in the Munchaganj district of Bangladesh, and continues to be celebrated as an early center of Buddhist cultural, academic, and political life. Similar to Gautama Buddha, Atisa was born into royalty. His father was a king known as Kalyana Shri and his mother was Shri Prabhavati. One of three royal brothers, Atisa went by the name of Kandragarbha during the first part of his life. In fact, it was not until he travelled to Guj and encountered King Jongchup O Wiley, Byang Chub Odd, that he was given the name Atisa. <laughs> Studies According to Tibetan sources, Atisa was ordained into the Mahasamgika lineage at the age of 28 by the abbot Silaraksita and studied almost all Buddhist and non-Buddhist schools of his time, including teachings from Vaishnavism, Shaivism, Tantric Hinduism and other practices. He also studied the 64 kinds of art, the art of music and the art of logic and accomplished these studies until the age of 22. Among the many Buddhist lineages he studied, practiced and transmitted the three main lineages were the lineage of the profound action transmitted by Asanga and Vasubandhu, the lineage of profound view transmitted by Nagarjuna and Kendrakirti, and the lineage of profound experience transmitted by Tilopa and Naropa. It is said that Atisa had more than 150 teachers, but one key one was Dharmakirtisri. Preaching in Sumatra and Tibet Tibetan sources assert that Atisa spent 12 years in Sumatra of the Srivijaya Empire and he returned to India in 1025 CE which was also the same year when Rajendra Chola I of the Chola dynasty invaded Sumatra. Atisa returned to India. Once back, the increasingly knowledgeable monk received much attention for his teachings and skills in debate and philosophy. On three separate occasions, the monk Atisa was acclaimed for defeating non-Buddhist extremists in debate. When he came into contact with what he perceived to be a misled or deteriorating form of Buddhism he would quickly and effectively implement reforms. Soon enough he was appointed to the position of steward, or abbot, at Vikramashila established by Emperor Dharmapala. Atisa's return from Suwanapum, where he had been studying with Dharmakirtisri, and his rise to prominence in India coincided with a flourishing of Buddhist culture and the practice of Buddhism in the region, and in many ways Atisa's influence contributed to these developments. According to traditional narratives, King Langdharma had suppressed Buddhism's teachings and persecuted its followers for over 70 years. According to the Blue Annals, a new king of Guj by the name of Yeshe O sent his academic followers to learn and translate some of the Sanskrit Buddhist texts. Among these academics was Naktso, who was eventually sent to Vikramashila to study Sanskrit and plead with Atisa to come teach the Dharma in his homeland. Traveling with Naktso and Gya Latsawa, Atisa journeyed through Nepal on his way to Tolung, the capital of the Parang Kingdom. Gya Latsawa died before reaching Tolung. On his way, he is said to have met Marpa Latsawa. He spent three years in Tolung and compiled his teachings into his most influential scholarly work, Bodhipatha Pradipa, or Lamp for the Path to Enlightenment. 
The short text, in 67 verses, lays out the entire Buddhist path in terms of the three vehicles, Hinayana, Mahayana, and Vajrayana, and became the model for subsequent texts in the genre of Lamram or the stages of the path. Here Atisa met Dramton, who would become his primary disciple, regarded as both an enforcer of later propagation ethical standards and a holder of Atisa's tantric lineage. According to Jamgon Kongtrul, when Atisa discovered the store of Sanskrit texts at Pekar Kordzalin, the library of Sami, he said that the degree to which the Vajrayana had spread in Tibet was unparalleled, even in India. After saying this, he reverently folded his hands and praised the great Dharma kings, translators, and panditas of the previous centuries. Writings Following are his most notable books Bodhipathapradipa Wiley, Byang Chub Lam Gi Sgron Ma Bodhipathapradipapanjikanama His own commentary of Wiley, Byang Chub Lam Gi Sgron Ma Charya Samgrapradipa contains some Kirtan verses composed by Atisa Satyadvayavatara Bodhisattvamanyavali Madhyamakaratnapradipa Mahayanapatasadhanasangraha Shiksasamakaya Abhisamya Prajnaparamita Pindoarthapradipa Ekavirasadhana Vimalaratnalaka, a Sanskrit letter to Nayapala, king of Magadha. See also Nyathang Drolma Temple Bikrampur Vihara